I'm going to present an extension from Scape for Genially, which allows you to add roulette wheel to your Genially presentation. Here's a simple example. So this one is just with numbers. You, it could be points. All you do is click on a button and it will choose some points for you. And we will see later that you can change it, that it will always choose a different number or that it will do it completely randomly. So here is a second example, a bit more sophisticated. So here is um, drawing a name from a list of names. And the interesting thing here is that once a name is chosen, it shows a link. So here for Greg, we can click Greg's name and it will take us to Greg's page. So there might be a quiz question, for example, for Greg on there. And then we can go back and choose the next person Okay, so now we've got Didier and we can have a look and here is his page and we can go back. Obviously, this could be something completely different. So it doesn't need to be a link. It could also come up with a question, for example. And then it means that um, the person who gets chosen will have to answer that question instead of using the link. The next example. So you can see you can change the colors here as well. In this case, the button is integrated in the wheel, so we can just click on the wheel to make it spin. That's the only difference here. And okay, and it doesn't come up with the links anymore. Okay, so it is actually quite easy to make, even though at first it looks quite daunting with all these different lists you have here. But really, once you understand what they're for, it is quite easy. And um, th it, there are two slides of exp explanations so make sure you read both of them so this one just gives you the first overview and then this part here with these bullet points it has a separate translation of what the french points mean here as well and what you can change them to so now i'm going to show you an example of how to create it so always find the blue slide which is the one that has the functions on it which you need to co copy over so all I've done is made a copy of this page and I've colored it yellow so I know that this is my example one and I've already added two little elements there which I will need in a minute. But apart from that, it's just like the template. So first we need this gray box. That's the most important part. This is the area uh, of my wheel. Depending how big I want my wheel to be, I can make it bigger or smaller. The gray area stays small, but the important bit is that this is a gray, big gray box here. And if you look at the preview of the page over here, you can see that big gray box there as well, uh, which makes it a bit easier to see how big it will be. Okay, then uh, we've got the colors. So you can have lots of colors or just, uh, you could just have black and white, like in the first example. And as you can see here, you can either just write the name of the color uh, and it does work in English here, so you can just write uh, blue and red and green. Or if you want to be a bit more specific with the colors, you can go into the color chooser, so for example here, and um, create the color that you want, and then you just copy that code out. So we could put this in there as well, and it would choose that color. Okay, then very important, our list of items so it could be names it could be numbers so let's say on my wheel this time i want to choose an animal so we'll go from horse then i have a dog then a cat and then a mouse so you can have lots or like in this case you can only have a few like the four elements the order and so this is the order they will appear on the wheel later on so horse will be next to dog and next to mouse and make sure that this is this list needs to be a bulleted list. So if you're creating it from scratch, make sure that you go into text and choose bulleted list. And then you need to group it with this function here. So the element list. So make sure this is grouped together. OK, so we've got our items. Now uh, we need to decide on the button as well. So um, in this case, I want the wheel to start spinning. If I click on this arrow, so all I need to do is put this behind there and group it together. 
Okay, and this arrow shows which name kind of is the important one. So it's always the one on the right hand side. It might be a bit hard now to see. Let's see where my box is. Yes, here we go. So I've got it in a good place there. So it's right next to it on the right hand side. The last thing that we need to take care of is this little link here. So we can either delete it from the page or we can keep it. And what this does is show a certain element when something is chosen. So in the example with the names earlier, it was connected. So if I show you what this looks like, so it was connected with these links to the individual pages. So if Kevin was chosen, then it would come up with Kevin's link to Kevin's page. So you don't need to use it, but in that case, make sure you delete it. Otherwise the page won't work. So let's say we want to use it and we could, I think, link it up to a picture. So maybe we could just have a picture of a horse come up or a, a dog or a cat. Let's have a look. Um, Now the way it links the picture to the word is that it needs to be created in the right order. So I've got the first link here, so I can copy and paste it. But now I need to make sure that the one that I created first is linked up with my first element of the list, which is the horse. So this will, this top one will come up when the top word is chosen. So go ahead and just copy and paste them several times, but make sure they stay in the right order. So the second one needs to be with the second picture and so on. And then I can uh, layer them all on top of each other. It doesn't really matter because only one will be visible at a time anyway. So just put them all on a pile, put the pile over here where we want it to appear. And now let's try it out. So I click, uh, I click my play button and here it has chosen the dog because the dog was the third element or the second element in both of the lists. Let's see if it works with the other ones as well. Let's click here. Yes, so the cat has chosen the cat. And you can see from the color, so because I've just written in blue, red, and green, these are kind of the primary uh, bright colors, while the mouse is the color of the uh, this weird red that I've created myself by adding the number. And the order of it, so let's say you want to make sure that um, the cat is the wine red one, you would need to change the order again. So here, because I've got four elements, so the fourth element, that weird red which will go with the fourth element down there so the mouse and um, so if i want to change it i can just change them around if you have less colors then you've got words it will just reuse the color so if i just get rid of the last two here it will just make them stripy and let's try this out so now i've got just red red and blue here then you can if you want to fiddle with these numbers here as well. So what they do is the following. The first one is the size of the writing. So the word that we have on here. In this case, they're actually quite a good size. I could make them maybe a bit bigger because the words are quite short. So let's just try it out. It's a bit trial and error really. Let's see 50 if that's better. Yes, now they fit in quite well. The second point is the name of the a font you're using, but it needs to have been used somewhere on a previous slide. The next one is the name of the color of the writing. So again, you could use a word or you could use a, a color code from the color picker. So in this case, I've changed it to yellow. So my words are yellow now. I can change the alignment, so how much it is in the middle. Maybe let's see what happens when you change to 50. So now it has pushed the words more to the outside, which in this case isn't that great. So let's change it back to 20. That makes a bit more sense. 
Okay, the next one is if it's right centered or left centered, so you need to write it in French, either gauche or droite. Let's see what this looks like. So now it's pushed them all in the middle, but this isn't great, so maybe keep it with the other one as well. Um. Okay, the next one here, you either write sans or avec. So sans means without, which will mean it will choose each word only once until all the words have been used and then it will start again. If you use avec, then it's completely random. Let's keep that at. And then the last two are the speed. 720 is how many degrees per second it moves. And the four is how many spins it does before the, the name gets chosen. So if you want to speed it up, maybe just keep it to one. And then this one, I think can go up to a thousand. So let's see if this makes it a bit faster here. It goes, so it only does one spin before it chooses a mouse. If we want the wheel to spin, when we just click onto the wheel, we can just ungroup these two, get rid of the button here, we don't need that. So now we can group this word with our wheel. So we just put it on there, highlight the two things and group them. And now when I press on the wheel, it spins, but it caused this box to disappear, but it's not a big problem if you just go to a different slide and then come back you can see that gray box again. There is also this yellow box in the corner here. You need to leave this on your slide. Without it, it won't work properly, but it will always be invisible. I also want to show you a very cool second version of this activity, which is the live version, which allows you to put in your options as you go along. So here we start with our empty wheel and we can just uh, type in uh, whatever you want. So well, you could go with numbers, one, two, three, four, and we can easily add lots more, or I can delete it and um, maybe go with color. So blue, red, green. It doesn't quite match now with the background colors, but never mind. Pink. There we go. And then uh, there are two different options. So either I can have it so that the list stays the same and I've just got a different design here for this wheel. So I've got green writing and different background. Or I can have it that the list gets deleted. So it comes just up here with my standard list and I can then put in something completely new. So to create this, it looks very similar to the first uh, variation we saw of this. Really the only new thing is this gray box here, which is going to be our text box. And also we've got two different options down here of a yellow box and an orange box. So keep the yellow box on your page if you want it to remember the list of words when you go to the next page. So if you've got several wheels in a row or the orange box means it deletes it after you move away from the slide and you can start putting in your new list. So you need to have one of the two and you need to delete the other one, otherwise it won't work. So if I just show you how to do it, we can find the template again. We duplicate it here. Um, so let's say we want to remember the list. If you've only got one slide with a wheel, I guess it doesn't really matter which one you choose. We do our big um, box here for the wheel. The important bit is we have to use the button so let's just do a circle here as our start button. There we go. We group this together. And well, let's keep the text box there. Doesn't really matter. So I could now write into it. There we go. 